What is up guys, Rai here, and welcome back to Lauren the Amazon Princess. Last time we left on a cliffhanger, a very abrupt cliffhanger, but you know what? I hope you guys have figured it out. I did. And the answer is... You... You are saying... Someone must die. Saren went rigid. Everyone did. Uh... Sacrifice? Yes. Who? It cannot be merely anyone. I wish it were that easy, but the task required of the martyr is too great. It requires someone with great skill and timing, and... Someone who possesses enough greatness to create a rift in their de death large enough for a death knight, and, of course, for themselves. They could hear their army celebrating in the city through the windows, but not a sound was made within that room. Saren looked at Lauren and his queen. Both of their expressions were as grave as the news they had just heard. These were the two greatest people he knew. One of them were go was going to die unwillingly. Saren's heart wrenched. I will do it. They whipped around to face him. Saren? I know I'm not as great as you or the queen, but it is because you are great that you must live. Avalorn needs great rulers, but it doesn't need me anymore. I want to make this my duty. Absolutely not! I will not let you do it instead! Lauren looked horrified. You do not need to decide now. All of you need to be prepared, just in case. Oh my god, a sacrifice! We cannot rest all of our hopes on just one person, so all three of you should prepare yourselves. They gave up arguing who would sacrifice themselves, as they all agreed to be nominated together. Which one of them who would pay the highest price was yet to be determined. It may be best for all of us if this is kept private. Oh my god! <laughs> it would cause chaos among their comrades if they knew what had to be done. Lauren knew that everyone would attempt to sacrifice themselves just as Saren had done. She had already made up her mind to become a martyr, but unfortunately so had Saren and her mother. The door opened and Mirf entered the room. She immediately picked up the tension and looked around warily. I'm sorry, but I think it is time to start your divination, Archwizard. Yes, I will accompany you. Mirf and Apollomisha left the room quietly. The three of them stood in silence with each other for a moment longer. Lauren broke away first, briskly leaving. Karen gave Saren a compassionate yet pleading look and followed suit. Saren looked through the windows to the volcano just outside of the city. In those mountains lay his fate. As a slave, he had never thought he could give the world anything, and he never once desired to. But now there was only one thing he was sure of. Saren was going to lay his life down for Avalorn, Erevorn. Oh my god, my heart clenched there. I... I called it the moment he was like, There was a catch, by the way. <laughs> Mirf was required to be isolated while she performed divination to secure Foss's whereabouts. A polymisho used his power to strengthen hers, giving her all that she needed. The process was expected to take days, and the army needed that time to recuperate, and for Lauren, Karen, and Saren to mentally prepare themselves for what might await them in Everborn. Saren wandered the streets of Hammerhands, looking for any clue of Mesfit. It was difficult to believe that he betrayed them all, even after so much progress. There were screams down an alleyway, and several dwarves ran out scared for their lives. Saren rushed in to see if a demon had lingered. What he found was a demon indeed. Mesfit was standing stoic in the middle of an alley. He didn't chase the dwarves or even look as if he was about to attack. It was almost eerie how placid he was, but he was in full transformation. He was completely trapped in this demon side. Don't do this! You can break this, I know! Mesfit stared into the distance, not even acknowledging Saren's presence. A demon went to attack Saren, but just before it did, Mesfit scooped up the attacking creature. He held up the demon and stared at it. The demon released sounds of pain in the Dark Elf's tight grip. 
But Mesfit was only looking at the monster, not killing it. After a moment longer of just staring at the slowly dying demon, he tossed it away violently. Mesfit then wrenched towards Saren with a look of disturbing hunger. Mesfit? He stalked up to Saren and loomed over him, threatening him. It was worse than he feared. The call may actually be too strong to break this time. This isn't you! Fight it! Mesfit fought him instead. He swiped at Saren, sending him reeling. Blood seeped from the flesh rooms. Betrayal and disbelief almost blinded him. But Saren knew better. He knew what Mesfit was fighting and that he could bring him out of it. He had to. Don't do this! You are a proud Dark Elf and your father's son! Mesfit made another swipe at him, but he jumped out of the way. Listen to me! Can you hear my voice? Mesfit, hear me! He barely got all the words out of his mouth before the elf grabbed at him. Mesfit viciously pulled Saren forward and then lifted him off the ground. Saren groaned against the mortal feeling. Please. Saren could barely breathe. He was about to black out, but he kept eye contact with Mesfit. He wouldn't falter. If Mesfit was going to kill him, then he would know the face of his demise. Saren was tossed, uh, tossed viciously to the ground. Air returned to his lungs, but he could only see bright white. It took a moment. Uh, it took him a long moment to recover his sight and look for Mesfit's next attack, but Mesfit was not there. The Dark Elf had run off again, and the wounds that he had given Saren took away all of his strength, maybe even his life. He didn't want to die that way. He wanted to save Mesfit. He didn't want to be hurt by him. The fact that he couldn't hear his voice was more devastating than he ever imagined. His last, last thoughts had been of that of the Dark Elf, not the demon. Oh shit. <clears throat> Saren woke up, though he hadn't expected to. He was in a bed and bandaged thoroughly around his torso and arms. His body screamed as he moved, reminding him of what happened. He knew he should have stayed in bed from the way his body ached, but not knowing about Mesfit's fate drove him up in searching. The city has, has been cleansed, but Mesfit has not been found. We found you alone and nearly dead. Saren, I am so very sorry. We should have killed him when we had... No! No. He swallowed and tried to ignore the burning pain coursing through him. I don't regret anything. Mir's eyes were heavy as she looked at him with pity. Many demons have fled back into the mountains. Maybe he is among them. Saren was beyond grateful for her tip. There was no way he was going to rest in a bed while Mesfit threw himself away. He notified Lauren and ignored her pleas as he headed straight for the Everburned Mountains. Saren traveled as fast as he could to the Dark Mountains. The search was hard on his body and many times he wanted to stop and give up. But something else would always kick in and he would continue his search. He almost couldn't process the sight of finally finding what he was searching for. It was Mesfit, but he had shifted, shed his dark elf garb as if he truly believed he was a demon now. Only Mesfit's name managed to pass from Saren's lips before he collapsed in pain. The demon Mesfit turned to see Saren on the ground and stared blankly at him. Saren groaned and grabbed his wounds. He was starting to realize how grave they really were. Mesfit turned around completely to look at Saren in pain on the ground. Mesfit walked over to Saren and eyed him curiously. Saren could not believe that Mesfit barely recognized him. A pain from deep within started to overshadow his surface injuries. <clears throat> Saren used up all of his strength to sit up. Mesfit began to look conflicted. Mesfit? Saren wished harder than he ever did for anything for Mesfit to shake out of his thrall right then. Saren's fingers almost touched Mesfit's arm. He was so close. His vision tunneled and his head spun. Saren fell backwards onto the ground again. But a hand was now grabbing his. Mesfit had caught his hand as he fell and was starting to realize what he was doing. 
what he was seeing. Saren? Hearing his own name never felt so wonderful. Saren. Mesfit's, vo Mesfit's voice grew more panicked. He crouched down next to Saren and looked over him in horror. I did this to you. You broke through. Saren smiled briefly before he winced in pain, but the knowledge that Mesfit had pulled away from the demon's call so near Everburn proved that he was right about him. Mesfit had the power to overcome it now and forever. Mesfit's demon features subsided and he leaned over Saren in agony. Why did you come here? Why won't you let me go? Saren grabbed at a bleeding wound. Mesfit opened up his armor to see the damage more clearly. The sight disgusted Mesfit. Isn't this enough? Haven't you had enough of me? I saved your life. I can't give you up. Mesfit's look hardened and he stared down at Saren. Why? Saren closed his eyes instead of responding. Why? Someone has to care that much for you. I want it to be me. Saren stopped responding and that made Mesfit shift uncomfortably. The dark elf lifted Saren's head off the ground and whispered to him softly. No one has fought for me as hard as you have. I cannot understand it and I will tell you to stop it every chance I find. I threw away my any chance, of, any chance of peace with someone like you when I tainted my blood in search for power. You may be saving me, but you're destroying yourself. Saren's hand found Mesfit's arm. The touch forced Mesfit to close his eyes. Is that what you want? Pain filled Mesfit's hush of voice. A tear fell, fell from his eye and onto Saren. Whoa! Mesfit pressed his forehead against Saren's. Tears began to form in the corner of Saren's eyes. Saren pulled at Mesfit, telling him that he still wanted it, even though it would be difficult at times, even though it would be dangerous. Mesfit whispered Saren's name just before their lips touched. For that moment, all the pain and darkness inside of him was there no longer. Saren slowly rediscover rediscovered his strength as he wanted to reciprocate. He wanted Mesfit to know the extent of his feelings and he wanted to learn exactly what they were himself. His attachment to Mesfit had developed quickly and intensely, but Saren knew that it was real. It was more than just what was on the surface. There was a passion and a will stronger in Mesfit than in any person Saren had ever met. That passion slowly began to manifest itself as their mouths moved faster with each kiss. Mesfit held Saren's body close to his, but gingerly. Saren had to show Mesfit that he didn't need to be treated so cautiously. He had managed to get this far, he was willing to go a little farther. Even though Mesfit warned Saren to stay away, it was clear that he needed him close, and closer still. Their time together in the glow of Everburn helped Saren to discover, recover what he had lost on the way there. He was able to stand again with time. Mesfit helped him all the way back to Hammerhands, not once hint hinting that he would leave his side again. I approve. I approve hardcore. <clears throat> Damn. It's one thing to have a romance scene. It's another thing entirely to have a romance scene on, like, the footsteps of the final boss fight. <laughs> I think that's what gets me. We just basically made love at the base of Everburn Mountain. You know, the place where all hell is. Not complaining! Not complaining at all. We will save here. <clears throat> After much soul searching, the entire party was prepared to face the trials ahead of them. Mirf returned from her divination with Apollomisho. She revealed to Foss that Foss had a secret lair underneath his castle, which was crucial information. Lauren arranged for the army to mobilize in the morning. They had but one more day to train and one more night to rest, and then it would be all over. 
Make way for the caravan! A long string of wagons rolled into hammer hands, laden with crates, barrels, and heavily armed men. What are those wagons doing here? The city has been evacuated. We know that, and we know all that's about we and we know all about the war going on too. We're not stupid. So we wanted to help out. The other merchants and I got together our best supplies and we want to offer them to you. That's great, thank you. For a price, of course. Of course. <laughs> have you men come to fight? We might have. Might? We're not going to risk our lives for nothing, you know. They grinned, showing that they were true blades for hire. I will pay you, you your dirty feed, but only because coin will be useless if we fail this next battle. Take it with my resentment. Gold is gold, lady. We are now under your command. We'll try to behave. Lauren ignored their seediness, knowing that the war on Everburn was worth any cost and needed the help of any hands, even those of bandits. Totally worth it in my opinion. If that changes the course of this entire thing, I'm all for it. Hmm. Looking for good weapons here. Ramus? Let's go with that. Just look for the best equipment available. Ooh. Overall, more defense is more defense. Ramus, we're going to use you a lot more, so... Let's give you that. Give you those. Give you those. Give you those. Draco, anything I can give you? Who else do I use commonly? Mesfit? This will work. Ring of Agility. Necklace of the Warlord, Ring of Agility, just taking my time here. Just about out of money here. But totally worth it. Totally worth it. I'm just going to make perfectly sure that I am ready for this final fight. I believe I am, so let's save. And that is all the time we have for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Got steamy, got sad, a whole array of emotions, and we're sure to experience more as the time comes. Until then, if you guys enjoyed this part, I encourage you to leave a like and comment as it helps and benefits the growth of the channel and tells me you guys are enjoying this playthrough. I am Rai. Happy gaming, everybody. See you soon.